Hi class, here I am. Yes, not in my usual spot. It's a little noisy here, but we'll see how this goes. All right, so we're going to start our discussion of simple meter today with accents. So now that we've covered the basics of pitch, rhythm, and notation, let's talk about meter. But first, we need to talk about accents. So the first question is, what is an accent? And basically, an accent is a note that has a little bit more oomph to it. And how do we notate that? Pretty simple. So we have these nice little sort of, well, they look like the greater than, less than sign. And it's basically over the music. So let's listen to this piece and see what that sounds like. So hopefully you could hear the accent and the music. It's very subtle. It is not in your face. So let's take a look at some other examples. Here we are in duple meter. And if I clap this, see if you can hear how your ear sort of feels that division. So here I am clapping. Right? So that accent is on every other beat and it is telling us that this is actually counted in two, right? And if I do it this way, where the accent is like this, right? This is basically telling us that the song is counted in three. And we can keep on going. How about this? Right? That's basically telling us that the song is in four. Super easy. So what if I counted it, or I clapped it rather, with no accent at all? Like, your ear literally can't tell where it begins or it ends. It's just a string of claps. All right. So, if accents on specific beats can tell us we should count in two, or three, or four, right? What is the definition of meter? Well, meter is the indication of the pattern on accented and unaccented beats. So, let us start here with duple meter. And if we clap every other beat with a little bit of oomph, right, that's duple meter. So if we listen to the song, you can hear that accent. So let's listen to this song. Okay, so hopefully you could hear that there's just that accent every other beat, right? So what about triple meter? If we feel that accent every third beat. So if we listen to this song, let's see if we can hear the accent. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. All right, so this is more of that waltz feeling. So if we clap harder every fourth beat, then we are in quadruple meter. So pretty popular song. Let's listen to this. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Here 
what would music look like if we use the accents to show the meter? So let's consider this music here, all right? Would you be able to easily read or count this? This would be impossible to just sight read. It would be, we would have to really sit down and we would have to figure out how to count it and it just doesn't happen naturally. So it's better for our brains if we group things together. So how do we group things together, right? We use bar lines and time signatures. So bar lines basically divide everything up for us. So let's go back to that song that was in duple meter, right? And you can see that there are several bar lines that divide it up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight measures, right? And the time signature tells us something important. It tells us what kind of note gets the beat and how many beats are in the measure. Remember that? So, a very important duple meter, right? So, duple meter basically means that the quarter note gets the beat and there are two beats per measure, right? And where is that accent? That's the important question. The accent is on the first beat of the measure, okay? Then if we go into triple meter, here we are. We are in three, four time. So that four on the bottom tells us that the quarter note gets the beat. There are three beats per measure. The accent is again on the first beat. Like, okay, one, two, one, two. That's duple measure. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's a triple meter. I said duple measure, duple meter. So if we go into quadruple meter, what note is going to get the beat, All right? Quarter note gets the beat, four beats per measure, and the accent is on the first beat, and there's a lighter accent on the third beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So there's a little bit of a lighter accent on the third beat. So sometimes it can be hard to tell between duple meter and quadruple meter, but I have faith in you guys. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back and remember what we called it when we divided the beat into two. It was simple division of the beat. Now when we get to time signatures, we consider the same thing. If the beat is divided into two, it is simple meter. Not the total number of beats in the measure, but the beat itself. So let's look at another example. This is a really fun march. Let's listen to it. So if we take a look at the time signature, what is that? Well, bottom note is a two, so the half note gets the beat. How many beats per measure? Also two. So in this case, you're thinking, well, why wouldn't we just notate this in four? Well, if I try to conduct it in four, my arm is gonna fall off. And this also makes it easier to read. So instead of a bunch of 16th notes that are just sort of crossing your eyeballs, um, it's eighth note, so it's a little bit easier to read. Takes a little bit of time to get used to playing and cut time, but it is possible. So let's take a look at a couple of music examples that are notated differently. So we have cut time versus 4-4. Four, four. So cut time on the top, 4-4 four, four on the bottom. So you can see on the bottom, there's just more ink on the page. Like those 16th notes here, right in here, are just gonna overwhelm our eyeballs quite a bit. So we definitely would prefer if it was notated in cut time, all right? Let's take a look at another example. And let's talk about this beat right here. So right, 
we are in 3-4 time, and there's only one beat in the first measure. So what is this called? This is called the anacrusis or the upbeat, right? So it's just the pickup, like, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Pretty, pretty simple there. So let's talk about what the simple meters are. Okay, we're kind of we're kind of skipping about here. I'm trying to give you a little bit of information here, a little bit of information there. So we know simple division of the beat is the beat is divided into two. Simple meters, the beat is also divided into two. So we've got like a quarter note beat or a half note beat or a whole note beat, right? So what are the simple meters? Two, four, two, two, and two, eight. And you might be thinking, wait, when the eighth note on the bottom, isn't that something different? Nope, it's in two, eight, okay? What about the triple meters? Triple, simple meters, goodness gracious me. Three, four, three, two, and three, eight. Are you seeing a pattern here? All right, we go into quadruple, simple meter. It's gonna be four, 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 two, and four, eight. So again, that can be a little bit of tricky because we see the eight on the bottom of some of these, and maybe we assume that it's compound meter, but it's not because the beat is subdivided into two and not three, okay? So let's talk about the compound meters. Now, today we're just talking about simple meters in terms getting into a deep dive, but I wanna let you know what the compound meters are so that you can kind of save that in your head for later. So what are the compound meters? They are six, eight, six, four, nine, eight, and nine, four, 12, eight, and 12, four. You can see how these are related, hopefully. To get the duple or the triple or the quadruple, you have to divide the first number by three. Six divided by three is duple. Nine divided by three is triple. And 12 divided by three is quadruple. Yay, all right. So don't get too fussed about these. We're going to cover them next week. Let's talk a little bit about subdivision of the beat, all right? So we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at our note tree. And we know that the division of the beat goes down to the eighth notes. So can we get any smaller than eighth notes on the note tree? In general, yes, of course. If I take a quarter note and divide it into four parts, What's it going to be? It's going to be 16th notes. All right, so let's go back and talk about dotted notes again. So we know that one eighth note equals two 16th notes. So if I dot an eighth note, remember, we're basically going to get three quarters of a beat, right? So here's my dotted eighth note, and it's basically, right, three 16th notes. Oh, I remembered that time. <laughs> all tied together. So there it is, that dotted eighth note is a eighth note with a sixteenth note sort of tacked on it there, right? We can also do it this way. It's a lot easier to notate it with a bar when they are grouped together, okay? Now let's take some time and talk about triplets. So we know that dividing the beat into two means it is simple division of the beat. Well, what if I suddenly want to divide it into three? Not for the entire song, but maybe just for one beat or two beats, right? Well, with triplets, we can mark them, right, with a three and off we go. So here we go. Here's a nice sort of a four, four showing you. Here is our beat on the bottom down here, right, just that quarter note beat, and you can see that here we're subdivided into two, here we're subdivided into three, just for a second, here we're subdivided into two or four, and then two again. So when we do that triplet just for a second, right, we mark it with a three, and that's what we do. So it's just um, 
kind of a weird thing, but I think you'll you'll notice that it gets easier with time. So here we have some other triplets. We can actually do a triplet across more beats than you're used to. So like if we're doing a half note, so like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, three, right? Bum, 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 bum. So you can do a triplet off across two beats, which is kind of crazy. You can do a triplet across one beat. You can do a triplet on half a beat, right? Um, and so because we're in simple division of the beat, we are going to mark that triplet with a three and we're gonna beam everything together. So just as a thought, if I want to say I'm in like six, eight time, and I'm just merrily rolling along in six, eight time, and all of a sudden I want to do simple division of the beat, I would actually have to write a duplet because that's just how complicated life is, right? Okay, so that's just a lot of different points of simple meter in a nutshell. Um, I would like to make sure that you have watched the video, the Ed Puzzle video. And after this, you can go in and you can try the Simple Meter Kahoot, which is a lot of fun. That's something new. And you can try that. And then, of course, you're going to be doing your practical music exercises. So hopefully um, this wasn't too strange of a, a setting today and it worked pretty well and you feel like you're learning a little bit more about Simple Meter. So have a really fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.